What's good, bro? So this is a nice and sweet lecture for us today. Just a simple lecture. Basically, I'm going to be explaining bodybuilding to a five-year-old, just basically minimizing all the little terms and stuff. So if you're just getting into this and you want to get into this, this is the perfect video for you. But you see, I didn't have this. I had to figure it out on my own. I used to fucking just try and like understand what a rep meant, what a set meant. Oh, okay, like I have to do this exercise and stuff. And oh, like this, you do this weird like drop set or something. It's like I didn't understand this type of stuff. And so I had to figure it out on my own. But you don't have to. And really, I have a promise to you in this video, which is basically that I will help you to understand basically all these terms and all these stuff so that when you go into the bodybuilding world and you start watching videos, you start wanting to actually improve different stuff, you know exactly where to start, the different like stopping points and stations that you'll have to go through. And so hopefully I'll fulfill my promise by the end of this video. If you're new here, I'm Muhammad Ayad. I'm the guy who created the channel and stuff. And my main goal with this channel is really just to basically help teenagers with shit physiques to build basically top 1% physiques. I post about my interests and I really want to just try and help guys as much as possible. And so if you basically are interested in, in such content and stuff, do drop me a subscribe and do like this video. So let's get straight into this. What are reps? Reps are a short like acronym, I guess you could kind of call it for the word repetitions, which basically means the amount of times that you do a certain movement. So let's say we have the exercise of bicep curls when you like get your, your arm closer to your shoulder. So almost like pulling the weight to your shoulder, almost when you really like try and think about it. One movement from this do, going from going from here, like from go all the way down extended to all the way here. This is one repetition, one movement that, you know, is, is a count for you. And so People will tell you rep ranges. Rep ranges basically means the amount, like the range of the amount of times that you will do this movement. And so you have a bicep curl again, your arms extended, you do one, that's called a rep. And so you do 15 of these and that's called 15 reps, basically. And so that's really like, I guess, reps and rep ranges. Sets. Sets are basically the, like one session of doing a certain amount of reps in a row. So basically I did this amount of like bicep curls for 15 times. That's one set. I still have three sets, let's say for, for hitting four sets. And so I would do 15 for four rep, four sets, which is basically doing 15 reps and doing that four times. That's called doing four sets of 15. Common sense school. Exercises. Basically, it's just the movement. So the exercise is basically bicep curls. When you get your arm from all the way extended to your shoulder. That's basically exercise. Weights. Basically, it's just the weight that you choose. And it could be cable. It could be dumbbell. It could be whatever it really could be. And it's it, like, you know, it could be barbell. You could try and think about these different ways. You could like machines and stuff. Weights. It's just simply the weight. Now, pain, it's just basically like the point I really wanted to drop about pain is we feel pain, but especially for a beginner, you don't differentiate between pain and the pump because you feel that the pump is painful. But you don't like pain. What I'm really referring to with pain is not the pain that you feel from the pump exactly, but the pump, like the pain that you feel when, as you're doing a movement. So let's say I'm doing bicep curls and I start feeling some pain. That's basically the pain I'm referring to. Now, the one that I'm actually kind of more so gonna pump up is the pump. And the pump is basically the only metric that you really need to track to have a good workout. It is the ultimate metric to having a good workout. And it's basically when you feel that your muscle is just like ballooned, it's almost exploded. Like you feel like it's, oh man, like it's, it, it, it hurts, almost feels acidic or it feels really big. It feels like it's it's hard to move or like it's hard to extend. And that's called the pump. And basically we wanna try and maximize the pump in order to actually have a good workout. It's the perfect metric for the workout. If you have a good pump, you have a good workout and you will put on more gains. And so that's basically the pump. That's why I really opened up pain and stuff. Shortness is basically the pain that you have after like basically doing a workout. So let's say I did legs on Thursday and now it's Friday. But on Friday, I'm starting to feel a bit of pain in my legs. 
And then on Saturday, it's really painful. And then on Sunday, it's starting to slow down. And this is called soreness. And basically, soreness is just the pain that you feel after the workout. It's completely normal. It's not supposed to scare you. In fact, it's supposed to actually like excite you because it means that you have put on more muscle. Because basically, what you're really doing when you actually want to put on muscle, like the reason why we do these movements and we move weights around, is we do micro, like we basically have micro tears. We basically, when you move around a heavy amount of weight for a certain amount of repetitions, you basically will give micro tears in your muscle. Which means that your muscle now has gotten basically hurt, which means it will want to develop itself so it won't get a hurt like as hurt the next time. And so it will basically build itself into a stronger, bigger muscle. And that's why we basically train with weights. Intensity. Intensity is basically how hard you do the workouts. So you could push yourself extremely well, or you could basically do mini like workouts that are just for fun. And that's like the only really difference here between the two like two workouts is just the intensity. The higher the intensity, the more faster your rate of actually building your dream physique is. And really this is like I kind of like I have my own program and my program I basically maximize that amount of intensity with, to my clients and I basically basically like to be able to actually build them their dream physiques in only 6 to 12 months. I basically maximize that amount of intensity that they do. And it, kind of reflects their sorenesses in a while, like in a while and some of them get demotivated but really it's like the, the the soreness I like to think of like at least I've managed to build this for myself it's really just you putting on more muscle if you can basically switch the mindset of oh man it hurts so much to it hurts but I just put on so much fucking muscle this is the right mindset if you can have this like you will build your dream physique I guarantee it Muscle group. Muscle group is basically the amount of mu like muscle, like little muscle. So basically, we refer to bicep. So if I go bicep here, this is my bicep, right? We refer to bicep here. I hope you, I didn't just fucking like mute the fucking mic. But this is bicep here, right? And basically, like what we're really trying to do is basically like, so, so you've got your bicep here, right? And we refer to the bicep as one muscle group. Really, when we really want to get scientific, we call it muscle group, not really just one muscle. Because in reality, it's actually three heads of the same muscle. It's a bicep, but actually, you've got the long head, you've got the short head, and then you've got the brachioradialis, and so that means it's three heads instead of one. So let's move on to the next one. Hypertrophy. Basically, hypertrophy is maximizing the amount of mass that you gain, but not exactly the strength that you gain. That's basically what the word hypertrophy means. It's optimizing for hypertrophy, which means you're optimizing for mass. Pro muscle protein synthesis. This is like, it could take a whole video, but really, if I'm just going to minimize it into the most simplest thing in the world. Basically, my, like mu muscle protein synthesis is basically, so you have a clock of protein. Let's say that. You know, like, if we're going to really put this in... Hold on, let me try and actually draw this, because I could draw it for you. Probably be a lot fucking better. So, I've got something like this. And here, it's time. Here, it is protein. And basically, let's say that you got a meal. And basically, because you got the meal, the protein goes up. But then after a while, it starts to go down. And if you don't eat... It'll basically go down. But this is your ability. It's not just protein, really. It's protein and your ability to put on more muscle. And so muscle protein synthesis is just your ability to put on more muscle. You have these meals here, but you should constantly have like a lot of meals full of protein so that you will basically keep the muscle protein synthesis alive. So it will always be something like this, and then rising, and then basically it'll basically go something like this. Or if you're really going to kneel it down, it's basically going to be more so something like this if you're really going to think about it because you're constantly just feeding the clock and it's reaching a maximum like threshold of, of stuff. And so that's really just the muscle protein synthesis. It's just as simple as you have a clock and every two hours if you don't eat a meal or if you don't eat protein, really, it's just, that's really all there is to it. If you don't eat protein, then your ability to put on more muscle goes down. If you don't eat more protein, it's not going to go up again. And so that's really like the, the main point anyway with the muscle protein synthesis. Hopefully I explained this well and briefly. The eccentric, concentric, and isometric. I'm going to try and really nail this down in the easiest and simplest form. Eccentric is you basically lowering. It's you lowering the weight. So basically this is like these are the stages of a rep. So 
really like it's kind of different, but I like to think of it this way. Eccentric is just you ascending down the weight. Concentric is you flexing, like almost like, like contracting the muscle. So if you're really gonna nail it down, let's say st- like away from the bicep curl. Let's say it's a it's a bench press when you're like pushing the weight to your like away from your chest. When you're at the top phase and your arms are fully extended, that's called the concentric because you've just con- like basically. You've just basically flexed your chest. Your chest has basically been fully flexed, and it's because you pushed the the barbell all the way up. Now you go down, and that's called the eccentric. And you just staying there and really focusing on the squeeze is isometric. Is just basically holding the squeeze. And so that's really all there is to it. To like concent- eccentric, concentric, and isometric. The way I like to recognize these is eccentric. You ascending down the weight. Concentric is you contracting the muscle and isometric is you holding basically like it's I, I like to think iso oh so iso like holding i don't know that's kind of just how i like to think about it progressive overload really thought about in the community honestly i think it's overrated basically it's you like so per per set so let's say that you basically do something like 15 oh fuck you bro let's say you do 15 15, 15, and then 15. Four rep, four sets. And this is the rep range. But then for weight, it's something like 15. And then it's 20. And then it's 25. And then here it's something like 30, let's say. That's called progressive overload. It's basically you keeping almost like you could you could do so. Uh, some people like to do like twelve, and then it's ten. So almost going down with reps, and going more so up with um with weight. And this could work, but really, progressive overload is basically you m- going up with weight. And you could either basically keep the rep range the exact same. Or you could basically like lower by way of like so so almost like this lowering per set. So first set you're doing 15, next set 12, 10, 8, and it keeps going on, right? But here with the weight, it's always going up. No progressive overload is you going down with the weights. You going down with the weights actually refers to the second one, which is pro- progressive deload, and it's basically you just completely like opposing this whole thing almost like this and it's basically just starting with the very high weight but then more so moving to the lower weight and here the reps are more so kind of fixed i don't really like to like play around with this too much but i do always like to kind of keep the reps the exact same when i'm doing progressive deload and i really want to try and basically lift as heavy as possible the first set and go down per set like per set you go down with the weight till eventually you're just going 15s and that's really like all there is to it now what are the benefits of progressive overload you can basically like the intensity kind of goes up in some way because you're increasing the weight per the amount of sets that you do as opposed to here which you could be increasing the intensity but it's by way of other things not the weight which means it's probably by way of your repetitions or by just squeezing and fl- like going the eccentric concentric and these really focusing on these, which will help you to basically like do this and, and get better with this. Which one do I personally prefer? And the one that actually builds me my dream physique? It's actually progressive deload, not progressive overload. I think like I genuinely think progressive overload is just overrated. Calories. So basically, it's just the the amount of energy that is released from you digesting something. Just as simple as that. And basically, it's the perfect metric for you to realize if something is going to make you fat or skinny or something like that because it's just the certain amount of energy that is released from basically you consuming that thing. And so that's basically what we use to basically track how much should we eat and how much should we not eat. And so basically, for people who want to cut, and we'll talk about cut, I probably should just mention, probably we'll just talk about it right now. Basically, bulks are you going up in mass and you basically like choosing to go up in mass and build more muscle and build like put on more weight 
Cuts are basically you lowering your weight, lowering your button, like muscle mass and lowering everything else. Maintains are basically just you maintaining your exact same weight and your exact same composure. Now, calories basically are the vehicle to getting you to do those things. So when I want to go up and bulk, the simplest and easiest way to bulk is just by way of increasing my calories. If I eat more, I put on more mass. If I eat less, I go down in mass. And if I eat the exact same, I maintain. And that's exactly what calories is. It's just the metric of doing those stuff. And so really, that's what bulk cuts are. Like, I made a whole video on this, but I'm really going to try and, like, summarize. No person who is fat should basically, like, bulk. If you are not fat, you should bulk. If you are fat, you should cut. And if you, like, basically like the way you look and you're satisfied, then you could probably maintain. Or you could use it for a strategic reason when you're basically going on vacation or something, and so you just basically maintain. And so, by, like, they're, like, these are just basically, like, some of the lessons that I've learned earlier. If you want to like learn a bit more about these, I made plenty of videos about these and, and like I do make constant like amounts of videos and stuff. And so definitely like subscribe so that you can actually watch those. The mind muscle connection is basically how much you can actually flex with this muscle as opposed to something else. So when you're carrying the weight, we can like all kind of relate to this, but you're not always going to be carrying the weight with the muscle that you are going to be choosing. But it's the percentage of and the possibility of you actually lifting the weight. The higher the possibility of you lifting the weight with the chosen muscle, the higher your mind muscle connection is. And it's just simply this way. So if I can lift the weight with my biceps instead of lifting with my f shoulders and like doing a whole bunch of weird fucking movements like this, this is basically a higher mind muscle connection. Certain variations of workout like exercises certain variations of exercises will make like or break your mind muscle connection some will basically amplify your mind muscle connection you can basically like lift the weight perfectly with this like exact muscle that you are tra like targeting as opposed to doing some other variation which completely fucks you up and so really like what you need to understand is tr like try to choose good exercises that actually activate the chosen muscle for you and try and use your mind to think of contracting with the muscle and not lifting with other muscles that's really all there is to it and so hopefully i filled my promise if i did make sure to subscribe and like this video and like I, if you want to check out like the only thing i sell i made a whole fucking video about this it's like a like the basically some of the best service you can get your hands on truly like the best service on the market i literally help you one-on-one -on -one. like i genuinely I sit down with you We've got like four core programs that you can go through courses that are hours long and I hope you want to want to count your calories. There are plenty of different fucking features that nobody on the market gives. They're like it's truly like some of the greatest stuff you can think about. And so, if you're interested to learn a bit more about this and how you can actually buy it and stuff, I made a whole launch about this. I'll leave it as the first link in the description, the first video like in the description link. Hopefully, I can understand what I mean. And yeah, that's kind of all there is to it. And so, if you commit to the work, you will be getting the results.